Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. Today's video is all about overwintering pepper plants. So what is overwintering? Basically, it's the process of bringing your outdoor pepper plants indoors, keeping them alive through the colder months, and then reintroducing them outdoors next spring. Most people who wanna do this are just going to keep the plants dormant and indoors in a cooler room, maybe a garage or a breezeway of some sort just to keep the plants alive, but not producing fruits while they're indoors. That doesn't mean your plants can't produce fruits while they're indoors, but it does require a few extra steps and a grow light. So in this video, we're going to cover the benefits of overwintering, why you might wanna do it to begin with, and some of the drawbacks. Then we'll cover our detailed process of overwintering from start to finish and show you exactly how we do it. And then we'll finish up with some common questions that we've seen on our channel in the comments section over the last several months. But first, check out Geeky Greenhouse, our other gardening channel that is dedicated to anything that's not pepper related. So we're building a table right now for our indoor downstairs gardening setup, and we're gonna show you how we did that. So if you're interested in fun gardening projects like that and other vegetables, check out Geeky Greenhouse in the description below. Okay, so let's start with the benefits of overwintering, why you might wanna do it to begin with. And number one is that you can preserve a well-loved plant. If you're growing something unique, special to you, you know, you've grown an attachment to your pepper plant, you can keep it alive because after all, peppers are perennial plants in nature. They come from a tropical climate where winters are non-existent. So most pepper varieties can stay alive happily for four or five years if you don't run into disease issues or anything else that might kill the plant. So if you've given a name to your pepper plant and you just don't wanna see it go at the end of the year, you can keep it alive for multiple seasons if you like. The other reason is you're gonna give the plant a head start in the springtime. So all the plants that you start from seed in the spring are going to be relatively small, but your overwintered plant will already have a more established root system and thus will bounce back in the spring weather more quickly. And this will just happen naturally. Your plants are going to react to the higher temperatures and the increased light exposure in the springtime. And you'll see this beautiful transformation from a relatively dead looking pepper plant back to a happy, healthy, bushy pepper plant. At least that's the goal. And the last reason you might wanna do this, and this is optional, is to grow peppers indoors over the winter. You will need to provide artificial light if you'd like to get any sort of sizable harvest, so just keep that in mind. But for the most part, the goal is to just hibernate the plant and keep it alive, but not really producing leaves, not really growing at all, just in a dormant state until it's ready to go out next spring. So that leads us to some of the drawbacks, and the most prevalent drawback is pests. When you take any plant matter and soil indoors from the outdoors, there's always some risk of bringing in pests. You've got eggs, you've got larvae. It's always a risk, so we do a lot to try to mitigate that problem. The best way to deal with any indoor pest infestation is to just prevent it to begin with. So we'll show you exactly what we do to accomplish this. And the only other drawback is that it takes a little bit of additional work. If you're letting your plants die, you basically just uproot them and throw them onto your compost pile or into the woods to decompose. But for overwintering, you do have to do a little bit more. You're gonna need some fresh soil, you'll need to clean your pots, and you'll need to do some transplanting as you'll see soon. Now you can overwinter a potted plant, you can overwinter a plant that's been planted in the ground or in a raised bed. It really doesn't matter. The process is gonna look the same. So with that overview, let's get started overwintering our peppers. Okay, so we're gonna start with some fresh potting soil. Just get potting soil directly from your local nursery. Just make sure it's fresh, it's out of a bag, because you'll have less likelihood of introducing those pathogens or bugs into your indoor growing space. And I'm just putting it into a mixing bowl here. I'm just gonna pre-moisten it a little bit, just to get it to a point where it's moist, damp, but not overly soaked. So now, just a little bit of water. and mix it thoroughly. We do this whenever we're planting, planting seeds, transplanting peppers. It's just to make sure that the soil doesn't become hydrophobic. And every time you water going forward, it will easily accept the water throughout. That looks good to me. It sticks together, but it's not dripping water when you squeeze it. It's just enough to hold the water. It'll be a good medium to move our plants into. So now here's our pot. Again, it's about a half a gallon, it's not too big. We're gonna be downsizing this plant into this pot. Just make sure your pot is clean. You wanna look underneath the rim, below, at the bottom of the planter, especially if it was sitting outside, you wanna make sure that you get rid of any possibility of bugs. So I'm gonna add soil just to about maybe a third of the way, just maybe an inch or two from the bottom of the pot and leave it relatively loose. And we're gonna leave this stuff indoors, and then we're gonna go prepare the plant, bring it inside, and finish up inside. 
Okay, so here we are. This is our Numex Suave Orange Pepper Plant, and it's loaded with ripe peppers. And the first thing we're gonna do is harvest all of the ripe peppers and the unripe peppers. So these look like spicy peppers, but they're actually not spicy at all. Maybe just a little touch of heat. But they taste like habaneros, so awesome peppers. Okay, so now the hard part, we have to prune back the plant. I'm just gonna start by removing this steak, which is actually a stick. We ran out of real steaks, so that works. And we're basically going to prune back all of the branches and all of the leaves, leaving just a couple of forks on the main stem. Now this is gonna look really traumatic, but we've seen plants come back from no leaves before. Pepper plants are very resilient, and this is gonna give your plants the best shot at surviving the winter and avoiding pests. So this plant is actually a perfect example for bringing indoors because there's really no foliage below the first fork that we'll have to remove, so we don't have to worry about that. And we're just gonna leave this initial fork and then we're gonna keep these two as well and cut just above this node on every side. Try to get a nice clean cut. You don't want the plant stressing over wounds. Just like that. And on the other side, the same thing, right above that node. And on this side, we got two to cut off. So we have a few leaves left. I'm just gonna remove all of them because aphids and other pests will feed on the leaves and they'll be hiding in there. So you really need to remove every piece of foliage. Again, it looks traumatic. Your plant goes from a bush to a stump. But like I said, peppers have no problem coming back uh, from this state. It's one tiny leaf down here. You can get rid of that too. So there's plenty of life left in this plant. You may think you've just killed your pepper plant, but you really haven't. A lot of the life is in the root system, that strong root system and this strong base has everything it needs to come back to a full-fledged pepper plant and it'll be even stronger next year. Now, one thing I wanna mention at this time is propagating. Some people have asked us, can you propagate or clone peppers from a branch? And the answer is yes, it just does take a while. Many pepper varieties can take a month or longer just to sprout roots. But you could take these branches, put them in some water next to a window and wait for the roots to sprout. And they even make rooting hormone, which you could mix into the water to speed up the process. But that's not something we're gonna to do today. So next we're gonna get this out of this pot and we're gonna trim up the roots and get the soil out of them. So I'm gonna start by loosening up the roots a little bit, just like you're getting a seed plug out. Um, and then just turning the plant on its side and pulling out. You can see those roots go straight to the bottom there. And this won't quite fit into the pot that we're transplanting into. So I am gonna trim up the roots, but I'm gonna start by just loosening them. The goal is to just get all of this soil out of the root system and end up with a bare stem and a bare root ball. I'm just using my fingers to sort of dig up into here. So now for all the stubborn soil that is still in there, we're gonna use our hose. We start at the top. It's yeah, just using cool water and just the spray function on your hose. Try not to be too hard on it, but this, this setting for us, center, <laughs> seems to work well. And the reason this is necessary is a lot of bugs will lay their eggs inside the soil. Fungus gnats uh, live underneath the soil, so you really need to just replace the entire soil ecosystem when you're bringing a plant indoors. I'm just gonna take care of this really long roots. I know this isn't going to fit into our pot, so you just need to trim the roots to the size of the pot you're going to be transplanting into. You see how long those are? So it's worth mentioning that not every plant is going to survive this process. It is very traumatic and you just have to accept that there's a possibility that your plant isn't going to make it, but it's better to do this than to not because pests will just ravage your indoor space because they don't have their natural predators to take care of them as they do outdoors. So here we are. The plant is pretty much where we want it. There are some large particles from the soil that are remaining in there. They're just kind of stubborn and stuck. And for that, we're just gonna use a very diluted solution of neem oil and castile soap. So for any remaining eggs or pests, 
Uh, this solution should take care of them. I'm just gonna let that sit there for a few minutes. Could also use a spray bottle for this and uh, spritz down the plant in its entirety after you bring it indoors. And you can continue to do that uh, every few days after you bring the plant indoors just to make sure any remaining pests are taken care of. Just making sure the whole thing is covered here. And we're overwintering a few plants this year, so that's why we have this bucket set up. Uh, just makes it a lot easier to submerge all the roots. Okay, so with that, our plant is ready to go indoors and into the pot that we've prepared for it. So let's head back inside. Okay, so now we're gonna transplant this into the pot. As you can see, the root system is just gonna fit pretty nicely into this pot. It may have a little bit of excess and we're just gonna kind of set the plant where we want it to be, where the stem is maybe an inch below the surface. And then we're gonna start filling with soil and sort of poking the soil into the root system with our fingers gently to make sure that all of the empty space is filled up. Now another note on soil, if you can find soil that was kept and stored indoors instead of outdoors, uh, try to get that if you can. Uh, outdoor soil can have those pests that we keep talking about, especially if the soil bags have holes in them. Many of them do, so you might not be able to avoid it, but do your best to find a nice, clean, fresh soil. Okay, so even up the soil, pack it down, and there you go. Now this is ready to go into a cool location with some ambient light. The plant does still need light. We'll talk more about this in just a bit. Uh, be vigilant about pests. Like we said, you can spray down with neem oil solution on a regular basis and just be checking for pests. And over the course of the next several months while your plant is indoors overwintering, it may try to grow some leaves and you should probably prune those back because that's where the pests are going to be feeding from if they are around. Closer to the springtime when the plants are going to go back outside, you can let those start to regrow because that's ultimately the goal. So now we'll give this a light drink of water just to fill in those empty soil spaces uh, in the root system and set it in its new home. Okay, so now let's move on to some common questions regarding overwintering. The first one is, what is the ideal container size to overwinter your peppers in? And we chose a smaller pot size. This is maybe a half gallon or so. It's pretty small. It's much smaller than the pot the plant was in. And that's because we just wanna keep the plant dormant. We're not gonna to try to produce peppers while this plant is indoors. The benefit of downsizing is basically a smaller footprint wherever you're gonna be storing the plant. There's really no need to keep a large bushy plant in a large pot of soil indoors when you're overwintering. With that said, a larger pot will allow the plant to maintain a larger root system, and so you might end up with a better head start when the plant goes back outdoors. But for us, the benefit of a smaller footprint really outweighs that of a larger root ball, so we do something like this. You could do anywhere between a half gallon all the way to two or three gallons. With that said, you could go a lot larger. If you plan to grow peppers indoors, this is especially useful. Again, this is just growing peppers 101. The larger the pot, the more soil space and nutrients the plant can use to produce foliage and to produce fruits. So that brings me to the next question, which is, can I get fruits while my peppers are indoors? And of course the answer is yes, you can grow peppers indoors year round if you want, but you will need artificial light, like I said. We have an article all about the best grow lights for peppers on peppergeek.com. I'll leave a link over here and in the description below if you're interested. It's really fun. It's a great way to keep your passion for peppers alive over the winter. We do it every year. Again, avoiding pests is your number one concern. You really wanna clean the soil and start fresh because you don't wanna be dealing with an aphid infestation in your grow tent. We also have an article all about growing peppers indoors and all of the nuances that come along with growing peppers inside rather than outside. So read that article as well at Pepper Geek if you'd like more info. If your goal is to grow peppers indoors from your outdoor plants, cut back much less of the foliage. You don't really need to remove as many of the fruits. You can leave some of the unripe pods and hope that they ripen for you. The transition indoors, of course, will be a change for the plant. So don't be surprised if some of the flowers or the pods fall off after it's moved inside. So that's sort of another question that we got. How much should I prune back the plants? Well, we showed you how we do it but you can prune as much or as little as you want, but you should try to keep the amount of plant above commensurate with the amount of roots that are in your pot. For keeping the plant in a dormant state, it really doesn't need to be that big. You can cut back a majority of the branches and the foliage. So now moving on to the environmental conditions while the plant is overwintering. Let's start with temperature. You wanna keep it relatively cool. If you can, shoot for 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very cold for peppers. They're not gonna grow very much in that temperature range. You're definitely not gonna get any fruits, but that's really the goal. Again, you're just trying to keep the plant alive in a dormant state where it doesn't need much maintenance. 
It's okay if it's a little bit warmer, your plant might need a little bit more water in a warmer condition, but make sure you don't go too cold because the plant can start to stress. Next, let's talk about watering. In those lower temperatures, peppers really aren't going to use much water. The frequency of watering may vary based on humidity, but you really shouldn't need to water much more than once every week or two. Next up is fertilizer. How much do I need to feed my peppers over the winter? And the answer is basically none. If you're getting fresh soil that has some nutrient content in it, that should be plenty for the plant to make it through the winter. If you're planning to actually grow peppers, of course, the plants will need some fertilizer, so that's a different situation. But if you're just keeping the plant dormant in a cold environment, you really shouldn't need to fertilize at all. Now let's talk about lighting. In a dormant state, peppers really don't need much light, but they do need some. If you have a window that gets some ambient light, that should be plenty for the plants throughout the day. Or if you're growing in the basement where you don't have any natural light, you can turn on your grow lights just for a few hours a day. Some people have said that they give as little as two or three hours of light per day with their grow lights, but we're gonna be using natural light. We don't have to worry about grow lights at all. And lastly, let's talk about reintroducing the plants to the outdoors in the spring. How do you go about this process? Well, basically it works exactly like hardening off. We have a whole video about hardening off our peppers and we basically just throw these into the mix with our seed started pepper plants. But the basic rule of thumb is to get your plants outdoors when the weather starts to warm up, it's in the mid 60s, low 70s Fahrenheit and gradually transition them outdoors, increasing the light exposure every day. You don't just wanna stick them out into full sun as soon as it's warm because they will get sun scald and they may burn and they'll be stressed out. So you need to transition them slowly just like fresh young pepper plants, but they should bounce back and grow more quickly from there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video about overwintering. Let us know in the comments what plants you plan to overwinter this year. Don't forget to check out Geeky Greenhouse and subscribe to us over there for more gardening content and we'll see you next time.